Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Hiva, and here on my channel I cover recent missing person cases. Today I want to provide some updates about the Candy Green Gonzalez case. If you don't know who Candy is or haven't seen my video about her, I recommend you go ahead and do that. I will leave a link in the description below. I will also give a quick overview of that case here. On June 1st, 2021, Candy Green Gonzalez, a 36-year-old mother, disappeared from Prestonsburg, Kentucky. The day of her disappearance, Candy had been thrown out by her boyfriend, Jeff Black. The last time she was seen, Candy was on a property on Abbott Creek Road, and the interaction was actually recorded, so we do have video footage of what happened. Candy asked the woman, whose name allegedly is Charlene, to call her mother, Betty Dixon. Unfortunately, the call went unanswered, but a voicemail was left, and in the voicemail, you can hear Candy calling out for her mother in the background. In the previous video, I wasn't sure if Charlene, the woman making the call, was the homeowner, but it turns out that this woman was not the homeowner and was a relative of the homeowners. While this woman did agree to make the call for Candy, she she wasn't very kind to her and told her to get off the property at one point. There was also a group of younger men present at this interaction and allegedly they were doing yard work and had spotted Candy earlier. During this interaction, they were taunting Candy and one of them called her crazy and said there's no point in trying to help her. Ultimately, probably wanting to escape this whole interaction, Candy ran through the yard and into the creek. According to Betty, Candy's mother, Candy was visibly distressed at this point. Two days later, Candy's shoes were found in the creek by her family, I believe. Like I said, this whole interaction was recorded and we do have more footage and I will share that here. Does she know there's a ring? Does she know? That there's a ring watching her right now? There's a camera on the doorbell. We can see her. Where did she go? I'm coming. Bye. Listen, I don't know where you're going, but you need to get out of this yard. Walk along the highway. Huh? Um, Keiko can see her from the ring. Oh, okay. Keiko knows what's going on already. I don't, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what you're doing, but you need to call my mother. Call your mother? mother. I will call your mother for you. Happily. Where is your mom? Listen, I have your daughter. Is that a, is that a truck camera? Yeah. Uh, she wants me to call you. That's a truck camera. That was a truck camera on that tree, I think. Listen, I need to get your I can help you, but you need to tell me what's going on. Many have criticized those in the video for treating Candy like they did. Some people say that they were rude, others say that they were in their right to treat her this way. All I'm gonna say is that I don't believe that Candy was treated with compassion and care, and had she been treated differently, I don't know if this whole situation would have ended up this way. Something I want to point out is that these boys allegedly followed Candy when they noticed her acting strangely and wanted to help her. However, nobody tried to follow her when she ran into the creek or tried to see what happened to her after that. I understand that they couldn't necessarily stop her, but they did follow her all the way to the home, so why couldn't they just keep up with her and see where she went from the creek? They allegedly cared enough to stop their landscaping work that they were doing, get in their truck, and follow her to the home, so why couldn't they just see where she went from here? I also don't understand why the woman in the video, Charlene, was so adamant about Candy getting off the property, but was fine with the boys being on the property. Apparently, these boys were also strangers, yet she didn't seem to have a problem with them being on the property. In the video, it even sounded like the boys were in close proximity to Charlene, so it doesn't make sense that she would be okay with this, but not with Candy being there. Some even believe that one of the boys referred to Charlene as mom, so are they really strangers or is there more to this? 
In the video, there was also repeated indications that Candy was being recorded on a ring doorbell. They kept saying things like, does she know we have a ring? But this video was never produced or released and I'm not sure why. But it's now been over two weeks that Candy has been missing. Like I mentioned in my previous video, law enforcement has not been very helpful in this case. The family has had to contact their own search and rescue team and look for Candy themselves. In my last video, I mentioned that Candy's shoes had been found, but that's all we really knew at that point. However, after many searches were conducted, again, mostly put together by the family, it's believed that Candy did make it out of the woods. I believe she was tracked going up a mountainside and over a hill and coming out the other side by the road, potentially near a cemetery. I believe after she came out by the road, her scent was lost. However, they're not really sure what happened next or what Candy did from here. There were allegedly tire tracks nearby where her scent trail ended, so it's possible that she was picked up by somebody, whether this was her boyfriend or a stranger or somebody else that she knew. After learning all of this and continued pressure from the community, the Floyd County Sheriff's Department finally announced that they'll be conducting a large-scale search for Candy on Saturday, which is today. I'll insert a snippet of Sheriff John Hunt talking about this. Wednesday, the Floyd County Sheriff's Department announced that it would be conducting a large-scale search after 17 days of investigation. Wednesday, we spoke with Floyd County Sheriff John Hunt about their efforts. Uh, since then, it's been a you know um, a, a search underway by mostly by family and uh, a lot of friends doing some searches, and until uh, rescue squads and Kentucky State Police and uh, some other search people got involved and have done some some really have done some extensive searching uh, a time or two since then. They've used uh, cadaver dogs, tracking dogs helicopters, drones, underwater drones, uh, and then a man tracker. So there have been multiple resources put into these and, and a lot of effort into trying to find her. Um, and now we are here again, 16 days later into it, uh, getting ready to put together an, another large scale search uh, and hope for some clues. Saturday, we're putting together, like I said, a large scale search of uh, professional searchers. Um, we're putting together all of our resources right now that we'll show back up on Saturday and utilize a lot of resources again to cover some uh, targeted areas, some specific areas, not just random going through people's yards and creek sides and we'll be looking at some uh, specific areas. Well, it's great that law enforcement will be conducting the search. Candy has been missing for over two weeks by now. So much time and evidence was probably destroyed. Also, they announced this upcoming large-scale search days ahead of its time, which means that if anyone did have anything to hide, they would have days to do so. One of the reasons that some people suspect that law enforcement has been slow to react is potentially because of Candy's boyfriend, Jeff Blackburn. In my previous video, I provided a brief overview of Jeff's background. Again, Jeff is Candy's boyfriend of approximately two years, and he was the one who threw her out the day that she disappeared. I mentioned that Jeff was arrested in 2013 for public intoxication, and then again in 2017 for selling illegal substances. Something that I didn't mention, however, was that Jeff's father, John K. Blackburn, was the ex-sheriff of Floyd County, where all of this is taking place. His father was also the president of Kentucky's Sheriff's Association, until 2013. While serving as sheriff, he was arrested for a DUI, and after stepping down from the position, he has been arrested numerous times for other charges. According to locals, he also took part in a lot of shady business and was partly responsible for the growth of drug problems in the area. While Jeff's father, John Blackburn, is no longer the sheriff, this is a small town, and unfortunately, his legacy may still allow him some privileges and his son some privileges. According to locals, Jeff, John's son, and Candy's boyfriend has alleged been let off with lighter sentences and such in the past. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I find it odd that Candy was thrown out and didn't take any of her belongings, not even her cell phone. She had to ask somebody else to call her mother. This leads me to believe that Candy potentially felt threatened and that she needed to get out of the situation as soon as possible. So I wonder how serious this altercation was or if it had gotten violent. And I also wonder if there was a history of violence between the two or on Jeff's side. From my previous video, I learned that Jeff actually actually does have a history of violence and abuse. This is obviously very concerning considering everything I just told you and it could explain why Candy left in such a hurry. It could also explain why she was acting so strangely in the videos. Some people have brought up that Candy has a history of drug use. However, she was coherent enough to ask for help and to provide her mother's phone number. To me, it seems like she was more frightened than anything after potentially experiencing some sort of violence. After being thrown out and potentially
simply being a victim. It doesn't surprise me if Candy were terrified in that situation. And again, the tone we see being used in the videos by Charlene and the boys wasn't very welcoming or compassionate. Not only was she told to get off the property, but the boys had followed her from one location to another. This could cause somebody who was already afraid to be further alarmed and explain why she ran. Regardless, we still have no answers as to what happened to Candy and where she is. Like I mentioned, there is a search today and I'm hoping something turns up that leads to Candy's whereabouts. As of when I'm recording this video, nothing has been found, but I will keep you updated. It's been over two and a half weeks that Candy disappeared. Her five-year-old son and her family desperately need her and need answers. Candy is 5'8 and weighs 110 pounds. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. She was last seen wearing a pink romper. If you have any information about her whereabouts, the number for you to call will be down in the description below. There is a reward for any information leading to Candy's whereabouts. As always, my sources will also be down in the description below. But that's all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.